In today's video, we're talking periodization and progression. Welcome to the video guys, my name is Tyler, also known as the Fit Chemist, and I help people take control of their lives by taking control of their fitness and nutrition habits so that ultimately we can lead healthier and happier lives. So if you're new here, welcome, please consider subscribing, turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post a new video, and if you are returning, welcome back, I am so glad that you are here. In episode one of this series, we talked about progressive overload and volume, intensity, and frequency, which are the three variables to manipulate to ensure progressive overload. And today we're going to be talking about periodization and progression. Before we get into those, we do need to look at how training cycles are split up. So typically they're split up into three categories. So you have a macro cycle, a meso cycle, or a meso cycle, not really sure which pronunciation is right, and then a micro cycle. A macro cycle is the big picture of training, so that might be over the span of a year or a couple of months. Meso cycles are often referred to as training blocks, so these are smaller parts of your macro cycle. So you can have certain goals within these meso cycles, so maybe something like increasing your volume, which you can call an accumulation block, or maybe increasing your strength or intensity, so a strength block. Then you have micro cycles, which is essentially just each week of your meso cycle, and then you have training days, which is obviously the smallest part of your program, so that's going to be each individual workout. Before we get into periodization, I think it would be useful to define what exactly it is. So I'm going to read a definition from the National Strength and Conditioning Association. So what they say on their website is that Periodization is a method for employing sequential or phasic alterations in the workload, training focus, and training tasks contained within the microcycle, mesocycle, and annual training plan or macrocycle. The approach depends on the goals established for the specific training period. So remember we said you can have accumulation blocks or strength blocks. And then it also says that a periodized training plan that is properly designed provides a framework for appropriately sequencing training so that training tasks, content, and workloads are varied at multitudes of levels in a logical, phasic pattern in order to ensure the development of specific physiological and performance outcomes at predetermined time points. So broken down into simple terms, that's essentially how do we manipulate the different variables to ensure that we are progressing from week to week. There are two types of periodization. One is going to be linear periodization. So as volume decreases, intensity is going to increase. The second one is going to be undulating periodization, which is just a fancy word for saying that you're actually gonna be manipulating both of the training variables. So, you know, in linear periodization, only volume is decreasing and then intensity is increasing. But in undulating, you're gonna be manipulating both of those. So there's gonna be times where volume is increasing and there's also gonna be times where strength. How does that translate over into when we're actually writing the program for ourselves or for clients well it depends what their lifting level is so if you're a beginner what I would recommend is just following linear periodization start at a specific weight let's say you're benching I don't know three by eight at a hundred pounds so the next week you go in you could go up to 105 pounds and go for a three by seven and then the next week you go to 110 pounds for a three by six and again you're decreasing your volume so you're having less reps each week but you're increasing your intensity or the weight on the bar I would say follow that until you plateau and then it might be time to take a deload which we'll talk about in the next episode after that you could go back to the original weight that you were doing so if you started at a 3 by 8 with 100 pounds maybe you can do a 3 by 8 with 105 pounds or maybe if you stick with 100 pounds you can do something like a 3 by 10 so the goal in the long term is that we want to add weight to the bar or reps if you're more intermediate to advanced, you're going to need to decide on how long each mesocycle is going to be. And then from there, you need to decide whether or not you're going to incorporate linear periodization or undulating periodization. And you also need to decide what your goals are for each of those mesocycles. I'm just going to come up with an example here. Let's say I'm writing a program for an individual and it's going to be a 13 week training program. I'll say the first six weeks are going to be a volume or accumulation block. So maybe we're doing 15 to 18 sets per week. And then let's say week seven, we have a deload. Then after that, maybe we can do a four week strength block. So then we can drop our sets 
from 15 to 18 down to 10 to 12. But when we do that, we're gonna increase our intensity. So those workouts are gonna be much harder than the ones we were doing before. We're gonna be working at a higher percentage of our one rep max or a higher RPE number. Again, I'm just making these numbers up off the top of my head. So this is not set in stone by any means. If you wanna follow that, go ahead and do so. But that's why it's important to know these variables so that way you can do this for yourself. So whether you're writing the plan for yourself or for a client, you need to know how long is this training plan going to be? And again, what are the goals for each of those mesocycles? When programming for your microcycles or how each workout is going to go for that week and what those numbers are going to look like, you can do so in terms of percent of your one rep max or RPE, which is rate of perceived exhaustion. So to use that, let's say you said RPE 8, what that means is that you had two reps left in the tank. Sometimes this is called RIR, which is basically the inverse of RPE. So RIR is repetitions in reserve. So if I said I did a set at RPE 8, that means I had two left in the tank, but that would also mean I have a two RIR. When you're programming, you can use either of those or you can do both. So you can say, let's do a set at 90% of our one rep max at eight RPE. Personally, I like using RPE a lot because it allows for auto regulation. So let's say one week you go into the gym and you do a three by eight with 315. And then the following week you do a three by six with 315, but both of those were at an RPE nine. You still know that you're training at the same relative intensity. You just might have built up some fatigue from the previous week, or maybe you didn't get as good of sleep. There's a bunch of other variables that will actually come into how your training is going to go that specific day. So I would suggest using RPE. But for simplicity's sake, what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to program in terms of one rep max, because I think it makes a little more sense to see it on actual paper. Going back to our hypothetical 13 week training program, let's take a look at what the accumulation or volume block might look like. So let's say we're gonna do four sets of a particular movement each week. So we could start week one at 70% of our one rep max, then go up to 75, then 80, then 85, then 90, then 95, so for undulating periodization, what this might look like instead is let's say we start at 70%, then week two, we'd go up to 80%, week three, we'd go down to 75%, week four, we'd go up to 85%, then back down to 80, then up to 90, you just sort of keep following this pattern. So again, we're manipulating both strength and intensity, and there's weeks where one increases and the other decreases, whereas in linear periodization, volume is going to be decreasing and intensity is going to be increasing and those are not going to change. So then we said we we're going to do a four week strength block. So with linear periodization, what that might look like is we're just going to start at three sets instead of four. Cause remember we want to decrease our volume in the strength block and we're going to start at 80% of our one rep max. And then we'll go to 85%, then 90, then 95%. And then again, after that, you could do something like a taper or you could do a max testing week and actually go for hundred percent of a one rep max or a new one rep max. And then if we're gonna do undulating periodization, what that might look like, we'd go from 80% to 90%, back down to 85%, and then to 95%. So remember, these are just examples. You don't have to follow this. It's not set in stone, but I just wanted to show you some practical examples of how you might actually go about programming. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. As long as you're following progressive overload and you're manipulating your volume, intensity, and frequency, and you are ensuring that you're progressing from week to week, ultimately, you're gonna get the results that you're after. One thing that's obviously going to be of extreme importance for this is that you do have to track progress. So what I'd recommend is using the strong workout tracker. So I'll put a little screenshot of that up here. That's what I use for myself and all of my clients. It's a great app. Or if you're old school, just carry a notebook around, but you have to track because if you're not, then how are you gonna know how to manipulate those variables in order to get the desired results? Something I mentioned in this video was deloads, but I specifically did not go into a lot of detail about them because I personally believe that they deserve their own episode so that's what we're going to be talking about in the next one. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below. And again, if you are new here, be sure to subscribe. Turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when I post new videos because I post new videos every single Friday. You do not want to miss when I go live. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.